Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Sweet Talk with Sarah Harris, and we are excited to have a special guest here. It's our summer uh, issue cover feature, the iconic actor and culture influencer, Mr. Kadeem Hardison. Yes, we're catching up more with Mr. Kadeem Hardison. Um, again, he is our cover feature for our summer issue. Uh, Sweet Talk is presented by Sweet Life SoCal Magazine. We hope that you go and look us up at SweetLifeSoCal.com and subscribe today. Today's uh, show is sponsored by GCLA, which is the Girls Club of LA, celebrating their 50 years of servicing the community with director Gloria Davis. We also have sponsored the American Dream Grant Program. They provide funding assistance to first time low to moderate income home buyers with director Kevin Diller. Look them up at the American Dream Grant Program.com. We thank you to our sponsors that help make everything that we do possible. And I am Sarah Harris, your host, and I am just loving these sweet talks. And today is no exception. So excited to have Kadeem. We're catching up more with him. There's more to the onion that is his, uh, uh, in his layers. And um, I just wanted to be able to come to you and have a little discussion with him. So I will bring him on. Um, here we go. What? Hello, Kadeem. What? <laughs> what? Onions. How are I'm you? Onions. Well, really you know the, 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 <laughs> the layers and layers. I mean, there I are you. many layers to you. <laughs> so the onion yeah. that is Kadeem. How yeah. are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How you doing? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, let's see. Of course, part of that is the iconic Kadeem that we all know from a different world. And um, I just want to ask you, how, how has it been, you know, in, in that embodiment of, you know, that we all come to know from just the culture and the, um, because uh, you also made the impression of, of the um, kind of ideals that we need to live by, or at least you was working through some of them. So <laughs> how does it feel um, to live up to that? It's a, it's, it's a, it's a tall order. Dwayne Wayne was a, the perfect man created by women for women. You know, he, he, he usually got it right, which, uh, which put it, which made it harder for, for normal uh, non-fictional characters, <laughs> normal people, um, but uh, but it is something good to aspire to, and and I and I I can't hear it enough when somebody's grandmother will stop me at the gas station or something and tell me that her baby wanted to be an engineer because of me, or you know they wanted to go to a, a to school because of me, or they wanted to go to a certain school because of me, or is is it can she go to Hillman? Can they go to Hillman? Is it a real school? Where can I find Hillman at? Um, you know, it, it always makes me feel good. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a blessing on top of a blessing. Was it something that, um, you pretty much knew right away, um, of, of, you know, the type of character that he is, the person that he is, or was it just something that, of course, over the years, you just kind of, it morphed into you know more of an expression of who he is or did you just like spot on right away get it yeah you know the sides were there um he was from brooklyn i'm from brooklyn um he's a pretty nice guy he was a little awkward you know all the things that we are as teenagers and and and, and adolescents all I had to do was tap back in the junior high school, like, you know, for the beginning, for the early Dwayne, okay. you know, it was just like, you know, girl crazy, clumsy, you know, uh, not a lot of 
of a, uh, uh, not a filter. You know, sometimes he would just talk out of turn, say the wrong things. Um, and then as he matured and and got more centered, um, the writing was really good, and they they had a specific path and a direction mm -hmm. for him. So I kind of followed along. I just read my part and delivered it as as best I could, or interpreted it as best mm -hmm. as I could. Um, so so yeah. So the beginning, you know, I was nervous on on television, and and as an actor, you have to use what you have. Or, or what's going on? No, I mean wow. I couldn't. Dwayne, Dwayne was nervous. Did you in the first season? You could tell Dwayne was nervous. He was okay. all over the place. My hands. I was always talking with my hands and doing crazy stuff. You know, as a as a older or uh, I guess more mature, more seasoned actor, you would mm -hmm. probably bring that down a little bit mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. find a way to do it without all all, yeah. all of the craziness. Mm -hmm. So I identify. Since, I identify with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so since, since, talk, sweet talks. Yeah, I just kind yeah. of settle into it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, as you as you get more experience, you learn. Okay, I've seen that now. Whew, now it's much easier. Now it's easier. I've done it enough. Um, mm -hmm. But in the beginning, the nervous energy was present, and mm -hmm. and I couldn't try to play cool on top of nervous. Okay. It wouldn't work. So I had mm -hmm. to be okay. Well, this is what it is. So I'm mm -hmm. just gonna lean all the way into all it, the way in. and and hopefully people will dig it and and yeah. and and identify with the character and his and certain and, and cast my around you. I would imagine was a great support because it was a tremendous yeah. just ensemble. So yeah, yeah, we were know. a family. We were mm -hmm. all from pretty much from somewhere else that came to LA to do this. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have families there to be like, okay, see y'all later. I'm going, you know, I've, I got my family here and uh, not, we were like, what you doing this weekend? I don't know nobody, what you doing this week? I don't know nobody. <laughs> so we all kind of used each other and leaned on each other and and uh, and, and kind of bonded and, and, and became really close. Right. So continuing on the acting tip, you know, mm -hmm. um, you pop up and I see you, it was a Lincoln lawyer, uh, lawyer Lincoln <laughs> Right, well. Lincoln lawyer. Right, yeah, and of yeah. course you uh, parents in grownish and yeah, yeah um, right, you know, so and all that kind of stuff. But and um, for today, you are. Let me. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up. I'm gonna remove that one. Um, to okay, so I think I. I wanted to bring up Moonhaven, and I, and I apologize for that, but I had the opportunity to. Um, let me see if I, I, oh, I can. I had the opportunity to, um, here we go. My bad. Okay. There we go. Moonhaven. There we go. Moonhaven. This show yeah, on yeah. AMC Plus okay. is deep. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Deep. It had me, it, 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 it brought it into my mind was, I think very deeply. <laughs> yes. was just popping up in my head. I think yeah. very deeply. Yeah. Um, Shout it was just, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I figured you kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know me. But um, it, when I was, it, you know, because it's very um, appropriate and timely for today, living mm -hmm. climate change, and the, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, once upon a time, this may be fanciful, right? But no, um, it's about the world, Earth as we know it is just, we're just destroying it. It's in the destruction, burning like hell. And now there's this utopia on the moon um, and there is a, a, the initial settlement that is there to prepare the way so that everyone else can come, right? No, no, no. And so that we can so give we the can technology, give technology that we technology. have that, that saves, that keeps us alive on the moon to earth. Okay. That's, so to, okay. Yeah. So to, to fix we'll, earth. We'll, we'll be, yeah, exactly. To fix earth. Okay. We have, we have the solution. Like everything that's going wrong, that's going wrong with earth and da, da, da. We have the solution on Moonhaven. 180 years later, we figured it out finally. But it's mm -hmm. a culture that goes with the technology. So we're building this bridge, a, a theological bridge, so that right. we can send our youngest, our strongest, our smartest over to teach the culture. And then we'll hit you with the, with the technology and you'll have the utopia that we have. 
uh, at least that's the hope and that was the the vision of it that was the dream of moon and and so okay so like there's still another onion for me it's so many layers on it um it when i was first tuning in and getting into it it was like a, a shakespearean kind of you know <laughs> vibe where because it's poetry and yeah. there's you know the symbolism and meanings and i'm like okay wait a minute yeah <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah and and then okay of course your one of your first scenes is about and there's was previews out there about um what what is it about being small what is that again um 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 so so some nights you know on the moon we worry so much about how it's going to go and how the how we're going to change the future and save mother earth because we all believe that we are us and they are uh, we are them and they are us. We're all the same. It's not like those bad people down there and we're mm -hmm. the smart, good, safe ones up here. We're all mm -hmm. the same. And we're just trying to to get to a point where we can save the earth and make it so that we can all go back and live in mm -hmm. harmony there. Some nights that gets a little heavy and you can't sleep and you start thinking and thinking and thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and what I tell my partner who's having any kind of problems when you can't think. He's having, at the time, he's having little relationship issues and, and it's keeping him up nights. He can't, he can't sleep. And I tell him, when I can't sleep, I have a trick. And he asked me, what's my trick? I say, I go out into the forest, I get naked, I look <laughs> at the stars in the sky and I see how small, I feel small, like mm -hmm. small prop, big problems don't find small men. So if you just reduce yourself and just give, It'll stop. It'll stop all the things, and you'll see the world from mm. a different point of view, mm -hmm. and it'll allow you to think, oh, "My problems are nothing." You know what I mean? Exactly. My, my little exactly. relationship problem is nothing compared to what we're really trying to do. And mm -hmm. then, so it's it's getting small. You get small. And, you come and up we with, can relate to that now, today, not a hundred years from now, but now, today, yeah. and all the things that we're dealing with. Yeah, it's, um, it's a, and, a form of meditation. Yeah. 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 Um, the it reminds Moonhaven reminds me of. I remember when Avatar came out. My brother, mm -hmm. he was r raving about all of the stuff. He was like, you know, and this means that, and this means this. <laughs> yeah. And the same thing came about when Wakanda came out. You know, mm -hmm. all of the meaning, and mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. it was. This is jam packed. Yeah. And yeah. um, the last thing I have to say about it is with your character. Um, you tickle me because <laughs> it's it's like it, you you it's a dichotomy. You it kind of like an oracle, but mm -hmm. at the same time you're like a sponge. You're seeking, mm -hmm. and because I, I don't want to give away scenes, but like mm -hmm. there's something in there is like it's, it reveals like um, things that you're researching on or whatever mm -hmm. you're reading mm -hmm. up on. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, it was like you you got all this wisdom and you. Uh, you know, you're putting forth all this information, but at the same time, you were seeking stuff because yeah. you had questions as well. And I just yeah. love yeah. that. How do you feel about your, your character, Arlo? I, I love Arlo. I think Arlo's a dreamer, you know, even though, like on the moon, you're, you, it's not like you, 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 you take on your, your trade, like, oh, I'm really good at this, so I'm going to do this. We might need detectives. And you might be a carpenter in your heart, but we need detectives. So you you get the detective job. You come on and ah hey, yeah I can do that. You know you know being a detective is not really hard on the moon. It's we have a we have a, a device that kind of like an iPhone that tells us everything because we're all tagged and marked and no one can hide. So um so so as a dreamer and a detective, it opens him up for a lot of uh, discovery. You know, mm -hmm. he's 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 very um, curious and, and almost sometimes childlike in his, his approach. And, and that was a whole lot of fun for me. Mm -hmm. Like I, we were figuring them out as we went. Like when I got there, I, I wasn't exactly sure who he was. But the two weeks we spent in rehearsal mm -hmm. with our directors, uh, uh, Savage and Crudy, their team, it's the female directing team, they're awesome. Um, um, we figured it out. We, we found that the, the right place. Like I, I did 
good enough in the audition to get the job and I and I and I knew what it was to be a mooner, but Arlo still needed some tweaking for me. So when I got there and the work we did in like two weeks of rehearsal with with our directors really kind of was like, then I was settled. Then I was like, come on, let's shoot, let's shoot, let's shoot. Come on, let's shoot. When are we gonna shoot? God damn, wow, when do I get to shoot? So, so yeah, so it was a while. I think they, they must have shot nine days before, mm. I, before I got to work. Cause mm. they had a lot of stuff with, with Emma in the water. She had to be in the water the first day, Ooh. all day and all night. It's an amazing and, set. Oh my, no, it's, a, it's all practical. We were in the forests and woodlands of, of Ireland. And yeah, and forgive me for my terminology, but yeah, this the yeah. whole you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah, the design, yeah. the, the, the mm -hmm. production design is 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 off the charts. Mm -hmm. Um, our production design is fantastic. The sets looked marvelous. The locations were dreamy. It, every day going to work, it was just like I would just stare out the window and watch it <laughs> all, just like like a kid. It was very right. easy to be Arlo because here I was. A complete fish out of water in Dublin, Ireland, and 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 getting to experience this place that I've always wanted to go to um, for the first time, and mm -hmm. to be on this job like with this guy with this ethereal kind of vibe, it 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 was uh it was gifted to me. You know what I mean? Like everything around me, the whole surroundings were a mm -hmm. gift. It just made it that much easier to fall into it. Well, I really hope that people do check it out. It is me a too. great series and um, it got picked I, up for I, a second season too we're coming back with season two yeah yeah got to got to because yeah. there's more to this story more absolutely to this story. yeah we it just was too started. short for me i was like wait yeah. a minute it's over <laughs> <laughs> it's over i felt the same way i felt the same way yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah please amt plus people moonhaven check it out um uh the all of the episodes have here but it's still playing yeah. so check yeah, it yeah. out yeah um, and so next up, um, I have more questions, but um, mm -hmm. we have another special treat. Um, the writer for the article in our summer issue, Mr. Ken Calvin, is Ken. here today as well. We want to make sure that uh, we brought him in as well. So hold on, here is Ken. Hello, Ken. We kind of dark there in the face, but... <laughs> <laughs> How you doing today? Oh, turn on your mic. Your mic. <laughs> oh, I think I can turn it on here. Oh, sorry about that. I'm, I'm talking. I was muted. Okay, there you go. Got you now. How you doing today? Man, honor to be present, guys. I appreciate you. Mr. Kadeem. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can. <laughs> What's up? Well, you started it off with your interview with uh, Kadeem. And um, and so I wanted to give you an opportunity where perhaps maybe there was something un unasked, whatever, that maybe you wanted to ask him now. Well, you know, ultimately, uh, w when I got the assignment, you know, I was so excited because I don't think they understood how much I looked up to you when they gave me the assignment. So so being able to to have that time with you, man, I was... I was like a kid in a candy store, even though I've, you know, I've been on stage and, you know, played in front of thousands. But, you know, you put me right back in the fan mode, being that I, I looked up to you so much, man. So just to have the opportunity to see everything come to fruition and, uh, you know, how well the photo shoot went. You know, and just to get a, a view of the beautiful view of your home and all the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the figurines and, you know, just everything that embodies your spirit, man. It was just, just was a uh, overwhelmingly humbling experience. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. It was great to spend time and rap with you too. I could feel it. Everything you were saying, I could feel it. We had a really good chat. Absolutely, you know, and and I definitely enjoyed Moonhaven. Uh, you know, I, I try to do my best to 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 have a watch party. You know, we did a nice. great job of uh, uh, setting it up at the house. You know, because it was just the timing of the article coming out and the show coming yeah. out. Yeah, man, it was just an amazing experience, yeah. man. To watch you get that celebration. You know, from everybody. You know, from from yeah. you know coast to coast and seeing all of your yeah. fans. You know, as I follow you on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody just celebrating for you, man. You mm -hmm. know, it's just goes back to one of the things that you said in the conversation about, you know, not realizing how many people you impact, you know, and then as soon as that dropped, man, it was just like, wow, man, he's back, you know, he's yeah. back, he's present, 
you know, you, I say he's back, but you never left. You know? right. <laughs> you know, it's just, just beautiful to see you back in the in that limelight, man. Yeah, don't so call it a comeback. The, the, I've been here okay. for years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Shout out to LL. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what? Yeah, one of the um things that you guys have in common, of course, is sports and everything. And Kadeem was telling us about something that uh he picked up on in Dublin. Yeah. What was that? Um. Uh. Yeah. Um. The most popular and best, the dynasty of of rugby, is a, a team from New Zealand called the All B Oops, the All Blacks. All and Blacks. When I heard my boy Dominic <laughs> Monahan, who plays uh, who plays Paul, plays my partner in the in the in the show. He told me about this because I don't know anything about uh, rugby, and he told me, yeah, that the best team ever, like the you know the the dynasty, the the, the most uh, the craziest dynasty in the history of sports is the All Blacks from New mm. Zealand. And I went on a hunt. I was like, I gotta find a jersey. They call it All Blacks. Wait a minute, they call it all blacks. Wait a minute, man. are you serious? Yeah, let me I gotta go find a jersey. I gotta go down there. I gotta I gotta find the jersey and rock it back home because the all blacks. <laughs> I just right. couldn't get over. It was called the all blacks. So I went and found me a jersey. It was two for one day. I got two of them. And yeah, I, I, I was it was a big deal for me. I was very excited to learn about you know the culture a little bit. And then at the same time, I'm gonna say it wow. again for the all blacks. All right. right. <laughs> and 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 to me, that is um like touches upon really just essential to Dean because um it it's I see everything in terms of you like have a love for art, mm -hmm. you have a love for music, culture, just expressionism. Um, it, it, and, and it, and then also too, kind of like in a, um, cause you do a game or two, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so, yeah. uh, kind of techie nerdy kind of a way <laughs> stuff. Yeah, huh? yeah, I've heard you yeah. behave in that manner. So yeah. like, there are just many things like the, your, your, uh, figurines, um, yeah. behind statues you. behind when, me. When yeah, did you yeah. start it with, with, I call them figurines. They are statues. Yeah, when did yeah. you start with them? Wow. Um, and this is crazy. I just realized this. Uh, it was Lord of the Rings. Mm. And 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 I, I didn't even talk to Dominic about this. It's crazy. Um, crazy. Yeah. Sideshow, the company, had made these Lord of the Rings statues because of the movies. And I love those movies so much that I started buying them. I was just like, oh my God, I love that. Oh, look at that. That's the, the ring wraith. And, that, and oh, that's Gandalf the White on the horse. And so I started, you know, snatching those up and then I stopped. And then a couple of years later, I learned that they were doing superheroes, which was really my joint. Like when I was a kid, Marvel Comics was my my gateway to imagination. You know, what I mean, as, as a kid in Brooklyn, when you, all you got is like the street and then the, the window outside your apartment, like comic books were my were my life. So uh, when I found out Sideshow started doing um, superhero statues, I started grabbing them up. Started, you know, one here, one there, one there, one there. And next thing you know, the collection grew and grew. And then I found out there were companies in, in Singapore that do them and companies in Europe and uh, everywhere that, that make them. So I just started grabbing up my favorite ones mm. and, and, you know, and cluttering up my damn house. Right. But <laughs> I, I had a chance to watch the unboxing of the DJ figurine that you oh, uh, yes. had a couple of weeks yes. ago. Man. And that, that alone inspired me to want to start my own collection. Because, you know, yes. we grew up with our heads, you know, and just to see the, the evolution and hearing you talk about the, the elements of hip hop yes. as you broke it down, man, it was like, oh, man, yeah. now. Now I can get into this, yeah. Kadeem. This <laughs> yeah, right. got me started, big bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that that was crazy. That was an, another um, sideshow joint where they they got with the artist Justin Boa, um, who's a well known artist, and he created these the, the four elements of hip hop, and um, and and I and they asked me if I wanted to dig on, you know, do a little unboxing of them because I had done a whole bunch of unboxings for them for superhero statues, but never this. And since hip hop is, you know, my, one of my- Today I <laughs> well, my, my apologies. cousin in the background. Yeah, I was just trying to show your special delivery. Yeah. Um, was that with Kadeem? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is where you are presenting some of these things that yeah, um, yeah. draw a special to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The DJ, the artist, the MC, and uh, and and the uh, DJ artist. Uh, wait, the DJ graffiti art, and and the graffiti. No, the artist. That's the artist. Oh, it's good. The the break dancer. Thank break you. Dance. There's boxy break in dance. the background. Thank you, boxy, for the people. Yeah, <laughs> break dancer. That's right. When did you the start special that's it. delivery? The Say it again. When did you start special delivery? <clears throat> wow, um, that came about because of uh, Zendaya. Really, Zendaya was mm -hmm. over at the house, and she had Snapchat. And I would always, whenever she tried to put me on Snapchat, I always put my hand up like, "Now nah, get out of here! I don't, <laughs> I don't do that thing." And one night we were sitting there watching something on TV, and she kind of filmed my top shelf and then came down to me and put the camera on me. And the CEO of the company, his son saw it because he followed her and was like, dad, we got to get this guy in here. His whole top shelf is all your all your stuff. Two weeks later, I got a call saying, hey, you want to come down the side show and get a tour? And I was like, how the hell did that happen? <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, I'm touring it. And, and, I'm, and it's just such a, a, a haven for geeks wow. like i got to meet the the artists the the sculptors mm -hmm. the painters the you know where they come up with the ideas i just walked through the whole thing and saw the whole inner workings of that place and how they come up with them and then there was one statue that i really wanted which was a a a, a thor breaker of brimstone statue that i really wanted but i didn't want to pay for it so i was like hey how about, i got an idea how about you let me do a a little unboxing and um and and then I get to keep the statue, and they came back a couple of weeks later like eh, let's yeah, maybe we'll do a couple of unboxing, mm -hmm. and I was like okay, and uh and yeah, so yeah wow that's that's wow. that started a couple of years ago back when okay. when I was doing Casey Undercover. Okay. Yeah, I think the coolest thing about everything you do from the from the unboxing and, and everything else that is transitioned from the sneakers. You know, mm -hmm. it, it kind of embodies what I talked about in the article as far as your character, Dwayne, and how he was just <laughs> so innovative for people of color. Like it's, it's yeah. like you introduced so much to young black men that other people would have probably thought wasn't cool prior to you mm -hmm. doing it. Right. That was one yeah, of my yeah. favorite things about you as a character on that show. But to see you live in that is, yeah. is just an amazing experience, bro. Yeah, yeah. The power, the power of television. Like, you know, I... I I'm really, you know, I'm super proud that we um, we affected school uh, registration, people going to school. Like, who would have thought that would have happened? Mm. You know, we tried to make some jokes and have a good time and tell a good story, but mm -hmm. I have no idea that we would ever, you know, triple, quadruple the enrollment in, in colleges, period, at HBCUs in particular. Like, really? People saw that and... And this was the takeaway was that school could be cool and fun and da 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 and higher learning and exactly. holy snap. Yeah, you, yeah. You made cool. you made the college experience appetizing <laughs> to young yeah. black kids like <laughs> me in the eighties, man. Like yeah. I, I it, it was in and, and what's crazy, it's before I was an athlete. It's mm, before yeah. I even knew I was good at football and had the potential right. to go and play in, at the collegiate level. You mm -hmm. made me want to be a college student. Wow. Yeah. Well, one thing is for sure, representation means a whole lot. Absolutely. And when we have those type of visuals and something, uh, someone to look up that look like us, mm -hmm. um, that experience things like us, it really matters. It yeah, matters absolutely. that more than what people know. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a person at the comment, uh, Wendy Gladney. Uh, she says maybe Kadeem can share with us what he wants his legacy to be in not only the industry, but also in life. Wow. Uh, in life, just always, you know, something I, I say to people is um, no matter what you're doing, always do your best because you never know who's watching. And, mm. and, and whatever you do might inspire somebody else to pick that up and take it a little further. So whatever you're doing, no matter who's watching or who you know is watching, just go at it full, you know, do your best. Do your best, for yeah. sure, and 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 it definitely uh, appears to us that that's that's how you you live. I mean, it just mm -hmm. seems like mm -hmm. you, you're authentic, 
and you live in what you know moves you and passionate about it just yeah. seems to be all around you yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> literally literally <laughs> yeah. um yeah. one of the uh, last things i wanted to mention was about um uh moon trip oh um, yeah which, which is yeah. kind of funny because it's moon haven and you got moon <laughs> right. trip <laughs> yeah. like, what's up with that? Yeah. And he, you're uh, in the magazine. You'll see a picture of him. Uh, his, she, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a she. It's she. I'm sorry. Yeah. She. That's okay. Uh, companion dog. Uh, yeah. What kind of dog is she? She's a mix. Uh, she's a gender, you know, breed. She's a, a a rescue from the South Korean uh, dog meat trade. You know, they wow. they, they kind of they breed them for mm. food, and. Uh, and she was too cute, so we took her off the grill. Wow. <laughs> and I was, I was, the, I was the bad guy at the at the time. I was saying because they have to interview you to know that you're going to be a good home and da da da. And I was like, so they're like, so so what are you going to have around her? And I was like, barbecue sauce. And they were like, no, don't come on, you can't talk like that. That's not funny. I was like, come on, that's you gotta be. You know, if you're talking about Korean barbecue, barbecue sauce, maybe a little dipping sauce goes well. They were like, no, you can't do that. Not in the interview. That won't be funny. And I was like, okay, I'll be quiet. And um, so, yeah, so we we got her. She came from Korea um, on a plane. And and she was, and she's, you know, she's a trip. <laughs> so moon trip was was uh, was easy to kind of, you know, I think uh, the name trip came from a video game. Um, one of my favorite video games. I was trying to think, I think of a name. And probably Z was like, well, what's your favorite video game character? And I had to think about it, and I was like, "Oh man, I remember I played this game called um, uh, Enslaved uh, Odyssey to the West." Enslaved Od Odyssey to the West, I think it was. And anyway, the the main character's name was uh, Trip, with two Ps. So that became the beginning, and then Moon Trip Moon kind of came in there because we just love the moon. I I didn't know if um. The, in the magazine here, there's the picture here where you're on the stairs, and then you're um, <laughs> on, um, uh, Moon Trip is right down there at the bottom of the stairs. So check out the summer issue of Sweet Life yeah. Soap Magazine, and you can see Moon Trip in there. Yeah, but, she don't um, like the stairs. Yeah, hey, I, I got to tell you. Whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I do got to tell you, when I saw the footage of the shoot, it made me feel that much better about following in your footsteps because I'm a dog dad too. I got a nice a poodle, poodle Khaleesi. Nice. And I'm like, look, it's wrong setting friends, man. I'm following <laughs> the right friends. <laughs> yep, absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Uh, man, I've, I've 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 had dogs since uh since I came to California. The first thing I did, you know, in New York, that that dog life is kind of hard because you're in an apartment and blah, 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 blah. But as soon as I got out to California and got some space. I was like, I gotta have a dog. Gotta have another dog. Gotta have another dog. Gotta have another dog. Have dogs, dogs, dogs. Yeah. Dogs, right. dogs. That's my therapy, man. My time with my pup after work. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When you be rubbing me the wrong way, yeah. just, come on, Khaleesi. We roll them out. <laughs> <laughs> Khaleesi, nice. That was one. Of, wow, that was one of the choices of names for for trip. Was Khaleesi. Yeah. See? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I gotta share I that I, with I the wife, had, man. Yeah. That's mind blowing right yeah, there. I think I think I had just watched, I had binge watched. Like I unlike everybody else, I waited until two months before Game of Thrones was finished and I started watching. I didn't watch the first season when everybody did. I didn't have to wait eight years. I waited eight weeks and then I watched a season every week and wow. got to the finale just as everybody got to the finale. And yeah. And and we knew we were gonna get uh trip and Khaleesi was one of the names. Khaleesi See, was one you of the names. Like, yeah. See, yeah, absolutely. You didn't even know you were saving that for me. <laughs> I love it when that kind yeah. of synergy is just yeah. you know right there. Yeah. Oh my oh, goodness. Good. Yeah. Well, this has been wonderful and awesome. I mean, and then in the photo shoot, I mean, you you put your music on. And you were in yeah. the zone I yeah. mean, because uh, you know what you love and, you yeah. know, and it was just flowing. Um, yeah. Kai Bird, the photographer, mm -hmm. she was hitting on all spots and was able mm -hmm. to capture you and everything. And it was just wonderful and great. And I appreciate um, everybody for um, bringing all that together. 
Um, was there anything in particular as, you know, we leave for the day um, that you have some other special projects or anything coming up happening? Um, um, what, uh, yeah, Moonhaven season two. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing. Uh, Clear Mind. I did a little kind of a dark horror comedy um that's uh <laughs> that i don't know when it's gonna come out but uh but we shot it um it's it's in the can it's done the mm -hmm. editing now so that that should be floating around somewhere soon uh and the that reminds me when you talked about uh your um in with eddie murphy and um uh vampire in brooklyn yeah, it's Vampire yeah. in Brooklyn. So. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. Up. That was, that was my favorite one, man. That was your favorite. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite. That's my favorite movie it character of Kadeem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Julius Jones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That was fun. That was that was a uh, you know, that was one of those those um, can't believe it pinch me moments that you know I was in a car with Eddie Murphy cracking mm -hmm. jokes on a set, you know for money and for the love of the art. Just like, I can't believe this is my life. Like, I dreamed right. this when I was a kid. Like, I dreamed that, you know, seeing him on Saturday Night Live, I dreamed about me and him working together. Like, like not never knew it could happen, mm -hmm. but he was actually in a dream that we were friends and we were talking and ha ha he he. And I was like, oh right. man, wow, I just had the best dream. I was riding like, in the I'm car with Eddie Murphy here. and yada, yada, yada. And then next yeah. thing you know, we riding right. in the car. And, He's making me laugh. I'm making him laugh, which was ridiculous <laughs> to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonderful. So uh, again, so honored to have you here today, and um, being our summer issue cover feature for Sweet Life SoCal Magazine. Um, you've just been, um, I, you know, I don't know, just super gracious, and can't say thank you enough to you. No, and, thank and with you. that. Uh, Ken, thank you so much for, um, you know, your love and everything on the piece. Uh, we appreciate you. And I'll release you to you the rest of your Friday and your weekend. Thank you so uh, much. I appreciate you guys. Hey, Dream come true to do what we do, man. Love you yes, guys. Sir. Man, keep inspiring. Yes. Absolutely. Stay with me, people. I have a few things to talk about as they leave out. Thank you. Thank you. That it was an amazing show, wasn't it? Kadeem is just super awesome. And we just can't say thank you enough. I just spill over with the thanks that we have for him and our appreciation. Um, and just in closing, I wanna leave you with our next show will be next Friday the 19th with Terry Steele, who is a, a music producer and songwriter and singer was responsible for many of Luther Vandross's big hits. Um, and during the pandemic, he took the time to grow his garden. And we have a spread in our magazine this uh, summer issue that shows his beautiful garden. And so we have the great opportunity to have our sweet talk with him next Friday at noon, the 19th. Please join us. And then the last thing I'll say is for Sweet uh, Life SoCal Magazine, we will be uh, sponsoring, presenting a trip to Greece, uh, June, 2023. Details will be coming soon, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that we're looking for people to travel with us to Greece in June. We're gonna have an amazing time. It'll be June 8th through the 17th. So look for details coming soon. All right, thank you to everyone for joining us on this Friday. Um, have a great rest of your day and the weekend and stay sweet. Bye-bye. <laughs>